Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Jigs and welcome to Jiggy Math. Now this time, we will be focusing on how to derive trigonometric identities using complex numbers. So this first part, we'll be focusing on multiple angles like 2 theta, 3 theta, 4 theta, and we will be deriving the identities for cosine 2 theta, cosine 4 theta, and even sine 4 theta, which are the two basic functions in trigonometry, sine and cosine. Now, in order for us to do this, we need to recall complex numbers. Now, in Cartesian form, that is x plus iy. Now, in polar form, it is uh, r cosine theta plus r i sine theta, or in short, r cis theta, wherein r is the modulus and then theta is the argument. Now, we need also the Moivre's theorem. This is an important theorem in deriving trigonometric identities, and that will be r cis theta to the power of n is equal to the modulus to the power of n cis uh, n theta, wherein you have to multiply the index to the argument. Now, of course, we also need the binomial theorem, all right? So let's begin with deriving the basic double angle identities, example, cosine 2 theta and sine 2 theta. So in order for us to begin, we have to represent z be equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this is our complex number with a modulus of 1. Now, if we square both sides, we will get z squared is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of 2. Now, we have to apply the Moivre's theorem. By doing that, we will get cosine 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta. Now, this will also be equal. It just makes sense that this is equal to the expanded form of the square of cosine theta plus i sine theta, which is equal to cosine squared theta plus 2i sine theta cos sine theta plus i square sine squared theta. Now you know that i square is just equal to negative 1. So this will result to cos sine squared theta plus 2i sine theta cos sine theta minus sine squared theta. Now notice that those terms that are in highlighted, uh, that are highlighted in red, is actually the real parts. So if we're going to compare the real parts, cosine 2 theta will be equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So this is already one formula or one identity for cosine 2 theta. Now likewise, if we compare the imaginary parts, imaginary parts are the ones with the i, but we will just be getting the coefficient. So sine 2 theta therefore will be equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. Now, of course, we have Pythagorean identity, so we can express cosine squared theta as 1 minus sine squared theta, then minus sine squared theta. This results to the second formula for cosine 2 theta. And uh, similarly, sine squared theta can be uh, expressed as 1 minus cosine squared theta. So this will be equal now to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So these are the three formulas for cosine 2 theta. So you use um, the formula uh, when necessary. If, if cosine theta is, is just given, then you have to use this formula. If sine theta is given, then you have to use this formula. All right. Now let's try also deriving the identity for cosine 4 theta and sine 4 theta. So once again, we begin with letting z be equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then if we uh, raise both sides to the power of 4, okay, then we will get uh, cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of 4. Now, you know that we have the Moivre's theorem, which we can have this expression as cosine 4 theta plus i sine 4 theta. And this will be equal to the expanded form of this. So, if you uh, forget how to do binomial expansion, then you have to recall uh, the binomial theorem. And this will be equal to cosine uh, to the power of 4 theta plus 4 cosine cubed theta times i sine theta plus 6 cosine squared theta times the square of i sine theta plus 4 cosine theta times the cube of i sine theta plus i sine theta to the power of 4. Okay, so remember that the binomial coefficients are uh, corresponding to 4 com combination of 4 taken 0 
combination of 4 taken 1, combination of 4 taken 2, combination of 4 taken 3, and combination of 4 taken 4. And if you take a look at the powers of the first term cosine theta, they are 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So the powers are descending. But uh, if you take a look at the powers of I sine theta, you begin from 0 here, then 1, 2, 3, and 4. They are ascending. So that's how the binomial theorem works. Okay, now let's remove the brackets. Let's simplify this further. And it would result to, this one is I sine theta. So that would be plus 4I cosine cube theta sine theta. Now, if you expand this, or if you remove the bracket, it will be I squared sine squared theta, but I squared is equal to negative 1, so that will be multiplied to 6, and that results to negative 6 cosine squared theta sine squared theta. Now, I cubed is equal to negative I. Multiplied to 4 is negative 4I cosine theta sine cubed theta. Then this one is going to be I to the power of 4 sine to the power of 4 theta, and i to the power of 4 is just equal to positive 1, so that results to just sine to the power of 4 theta. So now this is already in simplified form, so the next thing to do, the next step is we equate the real parts. So what are the real parts? Cosine 4 theta is equal to cosine to the power of 4 theta minus 6 cosine squared theta sine squared theta plus sine to the power of 4 theta. So this gives us now the identity for cosine 4 theta. Now take note that if you want this to be expressed in just in terms of cosine theta, then you can use the Pythagorean identity to express this as 1 minus cosine squared theta. Now likewise, if we are going to equate the imaginary parts, we compare the imaginary parts, we will get the identity now for sine 4 theta, which is equal to uh, 4 cosine cube theta sine theta minus 4 cosine theta sine cube theta. Remember, if you are talking about imaginary parts, they are just coefficients without the i. Okay, so do not include the i. Alright, so these are now the identities for cosine 4 theta and sine 4 theta. And basically, if you are deriving the identities for 5 theta like cosine 5 theta, or sine 5 theta, or cosine 6 theta, and sine 6 theta, the steps, the procedures will be similar, all right, in which you're going to use the Moivre's theorem and binomial theorem. So if you're looking for cosine 5 theta, then what you need to do here in the first step is you rate both sides of the equation by 5. If you're looking for sine 6 theta, you have to raise this to, uh, to the power of 6, and therefore you're going to use binomial theorem uh, in expanding this uh, cosine theta plus i sine theta to, uh, to that certain power. Alright, so that's it for today. I hope that you learned something. See you next time.